The Pollock's earliest recorded history started in 1834 when a civil government was organized by the Spanish provincial government of Misamis. Don Domingo Ruiz, a native, was the town executive that year. Tradition says that during that year, a Spanish recollect missionary arrived in Tuluanan, believing that the town sites were still there. Upon meeting a native, he asked, Donde esta el capitan? Or in English, where is the captain? Our unknown hero, understanding only the word capitan, pointed to the west and said in Subano, Di Pag, meaning across the river. Guided by his muchacho, a Tagalog boy named Antonio Subido, the padre proceeded downriver and upon reaching the town site, named the place Dipag. Through the years, this was corrupted by mispronunciation and intermingling of Visayan and Subano words into what it is today, Dipolog. In 1912, the governor of the Department of Mindanao and Sulu, John Pershing, granted to reorganize Dipolog into a municipality under the condition that a municipal building should be constructed within six months and which an inauguration would be done. The seat of provincial government then was established in Kayasan in Barangay D1. With the assurance then of General Pershing that Dipolog would be separated from Misamis province, Two prominent town residents, Isabelo Z. Chavez and Eleuterio Barinaga, before the Centro Católico de Dipolog in a special session, assumed the responsibility of supplying the materials and the construction of the municipal building according to the approved plan and specifications prescribed by the people for 3,000 pesos only, provided that free labor would be rendered in erecting the big posts. Under a full moon on a holy Saturday in 1913, the customary cornerstone laying ceremonies was officiated by the late Gaudencio Bendijo. The first big round Molave post was erected right on the spot where the present city hall now stands. The building was patterned after the municipal building of Maribohok, Bohol, and constructed with the technical advice of an engineer, architect, priest, curate of Dipolog, Reverend Father Francisco Garcia, S.J. It has been a long, long course of time in nurturing a dream towards greatness. Some 96 years of tough work, of boomheading planning discipline, inconsistently outperforming progress leadership expectations that had to survive and flourish from three eras, the Spanish and American Commonwealth regimes and finally from post-World War II reconstruction period before our once upon a time ramshackled back, River Subanin's Deepak settlement would, albeit slowly, reach to its current modest city stature of bustling infrastructural and commercial economy of over 100,000 inhabitants. Such honor would pay homage written well fortnightly, immortalizing, so to speak, the achievements of the following mayoral successions. Pascual T. Martinez from 1913 to 1921. Pasiano J. Ortega, ad interim in 1922. Gaudencio Bendijo for three months in 1922. Isabelo Z. E. Chavez from 1922 ad interim 1925. Jeronimo Gonzalez from 1926 to 1927. Felipe B. Lacaya ad interim in 1928. Fermin D. Cagatan from 1929 to 1930 and then from 1946 to 1955. Herino Lailay Izorilia from 1931 to 1935 and then from 1936 to 1937. Vicente Calibo from 1938 to 1946. Pastor Arbahamunde from 1956 to 1959. Virginio Bilacaya from 1960 to 1963. Felicissimo L. Herrera from 1963 to 1969 as municipal mayor and from January 1970 to May 1978 as city mayor. 
Roselier L. Barinaga from May 1978 to April 1986 and from February 2, 1988 to March 1998. Dario B. Lacaya from April 1986 to December 1987. Luis B. Paloma from December 3, 1987 to January 7, 1988. Pascual B. Bahamunde from January 8, 1988 to February 1, 1988. Edilburgo L. Cheng from March 1998 to June 1998. Roberto Y. Uy from July 1998 to June 2007. Evelyn T. Uy from July 2007 up to the present. In summary performance retrospect, all of them, by many measures, have their own track records laying the progress headway of our city's economy, though most of their good development policies and programs were slackened by financial constraints and political interventions. The Pollock City's development since then fast-tracked. The concreting of major thoroughfares and Poblacion byways started. Then came the upsurge of high-rise commercial buildings, modern bank conduits, and communication facilities. The spread of concrete sewers and drainage systems. Waste disposals refurnished to fit the city's sanitation and beautification drives. Public central market buildings were rebuilt. The potable system was expanded. Power service, healthcare programs, terminals, tourism development programs, and city hall structures were made widely available and fashionable in the hurry of the people's growing demands for better services. Extended down the countryside of our barangay outback, physical and social services were invested by the government. The city's steady annual growth rate of 5% could speak well for this fact which, in the scale from 1 to 10, Dipolog's current infra-investment and public service performance stands on the good footing of 8% to 9%. All these are good signs of the city's economic health, set all the way preparing our city's economy for its bolder and grander strides in the next decades. Projected growth focused deeply on the politics of market economics, integrating infrastructures with productivity, livelihood industries, self-employment for the growing load from the jobless sector, and environmental management care programs. Growth visions and dreams for a better Dipolog are inexhaustible in the people's wanting for more. That's the irony of progress. The more we have it in our midst, the wider it seems is our people's void of dissatisfaction. That's what Dipolognons now feel in their foretaste of matured political leadership which is, in the 21st century, more outbound, entrepreneurial, managerial in its political contents balancing the city's both vertical and horizontal headways with the stick and carrot economics of the stomach. Dipolog's growth was overwhelmingly dazed by its leaps and bounds. It was made even tougher by the strength of its people. Dipolognons of sterling qualities which don't bend easily, neither giving up. Dipolog has proven its true worth, accomplishing much of its goals, and passing the test of time with flying colors.